Hello, my name is Patrick Kwong. This presentation is entitled From the Individual to the Collective Drawing. The following, in short, is about group work. It is based on a simple question. Why does group work often end up being less rather than more than the sum of its parts? As an educator in the discipline of architecture, this question is more nuanced and difficult to find answers to. We face the additional challenge of reconciling the expectation to educate a designer's role as the creative individual and their ability to work as a team player. Architecture as a practice is multi or interdisciplinary activity but its education has largely remained individually oriented. In lieu of a few prototypes, such as the design build studios, we seem to educate our students as though they will be doing architecture all on their own. The paradox of balancing the need to educate unique learners that can think and act singularly and independently while cultivating their capacity to work, consult, and empathize with others has remained an unanswered question. I would like to share my findings regarding this issue on group work in the following five parts. In general education, pedagogues have identified, have identified coordination, motivation, and intellectual costs as the common challenges for students working as a group. Coordination cost represents time and energy consumed by group work, including the time it takes to coordinate schedules, arrange meetings, correspond, make decisions collectively, etc. The time spent on each of these tasks may not be great, but together they are significant. Motivation costs refers to the adverse effects on student motivation of working in a group, which often involves free riding, social laughing, and conflict. Intellectual costs refer to characteristics of group behavior that can reduce creativity and productivity. These include a tendency to conform to a perceived majority view. Although one could argue for the benefits of group work by referencing the practice as a reason for doing architecture group work. However, such false equivalence does not capture the situations involved with education. In business, a chain of command is defined according to various explicit or implicit rules, habits, and practices. While at a place of learning, such a chain of command does not exist among peers. To demonstrate how some of these challenges are tackled, I wish to show you a method methodological approach through a collective drawing process as an example. This drawing elective was called drawing together slowly. The class, in short, is a platform that I have created for the students to engage in a short but intense period of conversation and questions about who they are, what it means to collaborate, and what it means to do so through the activity of drawing, which is a major part of what an architect does. Before doing it, we begin to question what it is. As suggested in the title, the course is premised on the patient activity of drawing as a communal event. What the title does not reveal is that through the simple invitation to draw as a group, a whole host of question, questions are brought to the fore. So what is a question? So, so what is a drawing? Is it a noun or a verb? Is it an instrument of communication, a tool for thinking, or could it be viewed as a platform for social learning and interaction? Are we compelled to view drawings 
aesthetically, or could it be a proxy for expression? Could drawing be a game like the exquisite corpse, which is serendipitous, creative, and fun? Who is allowed to draw? Is drawing individual, or could it be in groups? Or, as David Gersten has noted to say, is drawing always is something and is of something at the same time? In addition to the question of what is a drawing, it also brought up the questions of authorship. A drawing is almost always associated with a single artist. In architectural drafting, multiple draftsmen are occasionally engaged in one drawing. However, when, even when that does happen, their initials are noted on the title blocks to render distinctions of responsibilities. The factor of collective drawing is not to be interpreted as simply for this division of labor, since not all collaborations are equal. Collective drawing involves what some have described as the relational collaboration, which is derived through an exchange of tacit knowledge. It offers creative autonomy while learning from others. It is cultivated through a carefully designed learning environment and framework, including the rules, rules of engagement, atmosphere, time, and space. Now, I will share some details with regards to the elective. The three weeks long course is organized from intensive to slow, exploring different ways of drawing. The first week is packed with speedy drawing exercises, activities, and events. Students were together drawing still life, drawing indoor spaces, to outdoor spaces at the museum, as well as life figure drawings. They drew together, they drew sitting across each other, and they drew each other. The pace began to slow down and became, becomes more focused. Two types of drawing activities were involved, supervised and unsupervised. Each type will underwent six rules of engagement. The six rules are defining the participants involved, defining the subject or the thematic topic, de defining the methods through which the drawings are drawn, confirming the space of the drawing activity, defining the time and duration of the drawing. Finally, allowing the space and time for discussion and reflection on the works produced. The first example I would like to share involves two pairs of students using the live model as the subject for drawing engagement. One student would begin her drawing by capturing the gesture of the figure be before passing on to the next student. This notion of the passing on the drawing sets the tone for delaminating the single authorship expectation. It detaches the author from owning the drawing. The metaphor here is like architecture in the sense that the drawing doesn't come as a blank slate, but instead it comes with pre-existence, context, and history. It awaits the intervention of the next participant. The second example involves three to four students coming up with a self-derived set of rules. The three students here selected three chairs to draw, each drawing a top, middle, and lower section within one space time. The drawings are put together, revealing the impressions between the drawings. Another example are three students deciding to draw their home kitchen countertop. The drawings are drawn in three different space time. 
the first occasion that the triptych came together was when it was shared with the classmates in studio. The next example involves six to seven students drawing the everyday and forgotten heritage buildings, heritage buildings in Hong Kong. A list of buildings were compiled. The students researched and visited the buildings before deciding on how to draw it. The drawing exercise is an embodied activity involving negotiation, compromise, and working together. Together, the students decided to not only draw the building's current condition, but also include its history, as well as imagine the potential future. The elective ended with a large scale collective drawing involving 19 students plus friends and families working on a 10 meter by 1.5 meter long scroll paper. The students spent one day discussing and debating the common link between them, such theme that would enable everyone to participate meaningfully and productively. Mass Transport Rail, or the MTR, is an infrastructure ingrained to the everyday memory and imagination of the Hong Kong people. As such, students developed a con consensus to draw their home stations. The drawing is part fiction, part facts. Station's physical connection does not exist in reality. Its scales are also different. This interplay between the imagination and reality was what excited the students the most. Sharing is a necessary step of the collective drawing process. It is a way to bridge across the individuals and into the wider context and communities. A few level of exchanges took place within the collaborators and colleagues and public guests and beyond. Sometimes it involves only the students for self-reflection and conversing on the works produced. Other times, seasoned colleagues are invited for further illumination. The atmosphere and space contributed as much to the learning experience as the act itself. Upon completion, an exhibition was set up, allowing the students, visitors, to walk into their final drawing. Why does group work often ended up being less rather than more than the sum of their parts? The finding to this question can be summarized with the following. In order for group work to be greater than the sum of their parts, the work must begin with a question formulated by the participants. It must involve a theme or subject determined based on the questions discussed. The instruments and the methodological process shall be defined. The duration of time dedicated to the production of the group work. There must be a particular atmosphere cultivated in the classroom or the studio, allowing time and space for reflection. I would like to end this presentation with a video of the students drawing together slowly. <laughs> 